Hello there, you're watching Villain Miniatures. In this episode, I will paint the Cleric Beast from Bloodborne, the board game. The Cleric Beast is, uh, like most things in Bloodborne, colored grey and blood color. So the only natural thing to do was to prime this one with a flat grey to have a good strong base for my paint job. Here I'm putting down some uh, grey, black and white onto my wet palette so that I can try to do a little bit of wet blending on this paint job. So I'm starting out by just uh, getting some shadows and for that I'm just uh, applying some of this slightly darker grey into uh, the recesses and on the underside of the miniatures. I think I want the face to be lighter than the rest and maybe have it more like a skull sticking out from, uh, from the fur. I want to have this entire miniature grey, uh, but I need to keep it interesting somehow. So what I've decided to do is just to paint on a lot of different greys at the same time and just see where it gets me. So here I have uh, some white, grey and black on my palette. Uh, I'm using a large brush, I'm just uh, stippling, dry brushing and painting on these different colors. I think I want it to be dark on the horns, light on the face and on the fur, uh, like a medium gray on the, um, yeah, on the skin and maybe almost black on the fingertips, feet and the tips of the horns. It's already starting to look a little bit interesting at least. I'm trying to hit uh, only the tips of the fur with the uh, pure white when I dry brush, so that it's darker uh, closer to the body. By having a little bit more paint uh, on the brush than usual, I sometimes like to do some uh, over brushing instead of dry brushing, which is basically just laying the brush flat and just uh, painting it over the surface, making sure that it only hits the recesses, like you do with dry brushing, but with a little bit more control. So to really fill in the areas that, uh, that you want to, to color. Like on the horns here, I want some very sharp highlights before I go back to darken them up again. I want them to be yeah, more interesting. And these horns have uh, like some bark structure on them, which I really want to, uh, yeah, want to be visible. Now I'm moving over to a smaller brush to highlight the fur uh, with a little bit more control. I'm not going over every strand, I just want to have some, uh, some of the strains to pop out more. And also in some areas uh, it looks a bit too dry brushed, so there it just helps to drag a line over the area where you can see the dry brushing uh, strokes. Looks quite nice but I need more shadows uh, and I also want to introduce some colors onto this piece. So for that I'm going to use some Games Workshop shades. Sepia, Camo Green and Null Oil. This will just give it a little bit more life because this is a creature after all so applying some more brown tones and also a little bit of green uh, might make it look a little bit more lively, I think. But I will dull these colors down with the null oil and try to only have them in the recesses, not to give it green fur, but only a hint of color. And yeah, both the sepia and green washes are quite uh, strong on their own, so I'm going to use a lot of null oil uh, while I, yeah, while I apply them. I also want to introduce a little bit of red because the miniature or the concept art has some red 
down here on the ribs uh, and around on the face. So just have a very thin glaze of this, just stippling it on where I think it would be appropriate. Uh, and then I will blend it in better later. And yeah, you can also see that uh, the washes haven't completely dried, so this might seep into the washes and end up in the recesses. But the red is very dark, so that should be fine. My gray beast is looking quite nice and gray. Uh, of course, the washes toned everything down quite a lot, so I need to reapply some uh, highlights. And I will just do that by applying the white, black and gray combination that I have here on my palette, varying the highlight color a bit. So I'm gonna highlight the skin uh, with gray and the fur with white. The skin has some very nice lines on it, so I'm trying to keep my brush strokes in the same direction as the, the lines on the skin. I'm also mixing in a little bit of white to my gray, or actually quite a lot of white, uh, to have like a very sharp highlight on the skin, just in some areas trying to be very, very sparingly with this. Uh, originally, this creature has like a black uh, black face, uh, so the um, face and the horns are like some very dark gray or black material. Uh, but for a miniature, I don't think this works too well. I've seen a few uh, versions on the internet just by yeah looking at other paint jobs, and the black kind of takes the um, focus away from the from the face. I want the face to be the lightest part on this one, so I'm going to have it very bright white and also have some red on it. Might be a little bit uh, too little contrast on the face though, because the fur around the face is also going to be white, so yeah. we'll see. Oh, it's going to take a while to uh, pick out all of these, uh, <laughs> the tips of all of the fur parts. But I think it's important to do this step because it really makes the fur pop and kind of uh, highlights all of the fur details, which are very nice on this one. I mean, the Bloodborne animations for here, uh, I think that's like something from, from from software in general. They don't have the best uh, hair and fur animations, but the sculptor who did this one and all the other miniatures in the game as well really knows how to do fur. It looks very nice, especially on this arm. It's so very, yeah, it looks so very uh, lifelike and dynamic. I also went with painting the jaw completely red, so that it looks like it kind of has some kind of skull on top of its real head. Uh, this was actually just to uh, have a line going between the white of the face to the hair. All right, with the red in place, I think this one is starting to look more or less finished. I'm not completely sure what uh, to do next except for the base. So while I think about that, I think I'm just going to start doing the base, which is also going to be gray because uh, the beast is standing on some kind of plinth thing. Uh, I don't want it to be the same gray. So yeah, I'm not going to wash it with any green and hopefully that's going to be enough. But I have some gray here, so I'm just going to use this gray that I have on the palette to stipple it on. I also painted some brown on the base uh, while I was waiting for the washes to dry. But I think I don't, I don't want uh, bases to be like mud colored, I want them to be more gray. But a little bit of brown on the undercoat might make it look different than the pillar or the plinth. 
All right, I'm going for Agrax Earthshade and black for the plinth. Hopefully it won't be too similar. Uh, of course I used green and sepia on the beast, uh, but also black. So it's kind of a black-brown combination on the creature as well. And of course standing on a plinth like this, it does have a bit of like a statue feel. So it might be quite cool that both the base and the creature are in similar colors. For the base, I'm just going to go for the dark brown contrast paint to have like the lower part of the uh, base really dark. I think a dry brush of light gray is needed to finish off the base. Again, I'm just using whatever I have on the palette, mixing in a little more white. The stone texture on the base is actually quite nice, so dry brushing works great. And with some black around the base rim, my cleric beast for Bloodborne the board game is complete. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, even though I mainly painted grey. I don't think this is among my most interesting uh, painting schemes I've ever gone for, uh, but it's still an interesting challenge to try to make something look interesting using a very limited palette, and I think I achieved that by having yeah, the fur and the face much whiter than the dark grey of the skin. I'm looking forward to paint the other uh, miniatures for Bloodborne the board game. The miniatures are very nice. Uh, although I might think about introducing some more colors so that my entire collection doesn't end up being <laughs> grey. If you would like to see more of my miniature projects, you can find uh, links down below to my Instagram and Facebook pages. And if you would like to support my work, check out my Patreon and Etsy store.